Chelsea plan a swap at left back. Spurs are an absolute mess. And Mbappe's on fire. A transfer roundup and the power rankings all coming up in the next few minutes. As I'm your host, Matt Frodick. You are the one footballers, and this is the Daily News. First up, and Frank Lampard and Chelsea are planning a bit of a shake-up in the summer, and one of the main places they've identified as needing a bit of a difference is left back. That's because Marcus Alonso, despite the fact he's in good form and bagged a few goals in the last couple of games, just really doesn't cut the mustard anymore. Yep, that's definitely a saying in England. The 29 year old played in Serie A before he moved to Chelsea with Fiorentina and it looks like Serie A could be his potential destination as well with Inter Milan looking to sign him. Now of course they're used to signing kind of Premier League has-beens so Marcos Alonso fits the bill very well. What this does mean, though, is that Chelsea will need a replacement, and apparently that's going to come in the form of Alex Tellers. Now, the Porto left-back has recently rejected a contract extension, and now that his deal runs out next summer, Porto really needs to cash in on him this summer. There is a £40 million release clause, but if I was Chelsea, I think that would be the absolute ceiling. Like, I know if all negotiations go terribly well, they could just throw down the £40 million and get the player. But... He is entering the last year of his contract and Porto will be a little bit more desperate to sell. So I think if really, if they're really going to bargain, they could probably get him for around 25. So we'll move away from that and now to last night's FA Cup action where you guys will be laughing your head off right now. But Spurs are an absolute mess. It was utterly ridiculous. Not only were they outplayed, outfought and eventually lost to the team at the bottom of the Premier League table. Afterwards, Eric Dyer reacted to something, ran into the crowd, and things just aren't going well for Jose Mourinho's men at the moment. Jose Mourinho said he can't doubt the fault or the commitment of his players, but they're absolutely knackered. With his attacking options, he said if you want some of them to be available for Leipzig in the Champions League next Tuesday night, they might not be able to play at the weekend. Now, surely this is something that a Premier League team should be expecting, to play every kind of few days. But with Tottenham's injury list, especially missing Harry Kane and Hume Son, their two best players by far, things are really, really not looking so good. What it does mean is that Spurs, more than likely, because they're not going to win the Champions League, are going to end another season absolutely trophyless. And if you add this into the fact that Harry Kane is reportedly looking at moving away from the club in the summer, there's not really much to cheer about if you're a Spurs fan, which unfortunately I am. The only bit of slightly promising news, even if Kane does leave in the summer, is that he has said he will be fit in the next few weeks, so maybe there'll be a bit of a flourish to the end of the season. Alongside this, Manchester City saw their way through to the next round of the Cup, as did Leicester City. Both teams have 1-0 victories, and tonight, Wayne Rooney of Derby County faces his former side, Manchester United, as both of those go head-to-head for a place in the quarterfinals. And talking of Cup action, last night saw Kylian Mbappe reign supreme yet Again, another hat-trick for the absolute superstar as PSG absolutely destroyed Leon 5-1. Having looked at this fixture, I thought, oh, it's going to be quite a tight game. No, it just wasn't. Neymar and Mbappe were on scintillating form and literally just setting each other up. And I really started to wonder whether or not it's just them two playing for PSG. Like, it's just the other nine spots are filled in by whoever really wants to turn up on the day. And then Mbappe and Neymar just do the business and fire PSG through to a sixth consecutive French Cup final. They'll be playing Saint-Étienne or Rennes, who will play in the other semi-final. So this does beg the question whether or not Kylian Mbappe will continue on this ridiculous trajectory in his career, which currently looks a little bit like this. The fact that Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi have been so brilliant and re- highly regarded as like the best players ever is because they've been so consistent. Now, of course, Kylian Mbappe can't get there until he's mid-30s. Like, he has to be doing it for 15 years. But the amazing thing, especially about Ronaldo, is that he stayed fit for so long. There are so many players who have such unbelievable talent and either injury or a poor attitude strikes them down and they don't quite reach that level. For Kylian Mbappe to do it, the odds are pretty much stacked against him, especially when you're a player of speed. Those kind of older fans you know exactly what happened with Michael Owen the guy was on fire one hamstring injury did him in he never really regained that speed it was never the kind of same player we're all hoping of course that doesn't happen to Mbappe but it's going to be one hell of a career if he manages to keep this up as I said for the next decade or more so next up and a roundup of the rest of the day's transfer news that you may have missed and Memphis 901 FC in America now have Tim Howard on their books he's actually a minority owner of the club and the 40 year old has come out of retirement to keep between the sticks elsewhere and talking of goalkeepers, Barcelona set to offer Mark andre Ter Stegen a brand new contract. Lazio are interested in Lyon's Memphis Depay for around 50 million euros. And last but not least, Manchester City fullback Angelino, who is currently on loan at RB Leipzig, said he would stay with the German club if Manchester City's UEFA ban sticks. So, last but not least, we come to the One Football Power Rankings. You guys have been waiting for it. This is where we put together a list of the top 10 players around Europe based on their last five games in both European and domestic league competitions. So, 
we completely rule out the cups because, well, they're just a bit of a wild card. Anyway, before we get into the top five, let's take a look at who's in the numbers 10 to 6. Dropping down to number 10 is Lionel Messi after his poor Clasico performance. Aubameyang's in at 9, Muller at 8, Dominic Calvert-Lewin fires himself into 7th, and Kevin De Bruyne sits just outside the top five at number 6. So now into the top five, and in the number five spot is Thiago. He always seems to be in and around these places. That's because his performances are so good for Bayern Munich. He is a pass master, literally setting up everything. Every good move that Bayern Munich does usually starts with Thiago playing a role at some point. He is the base that they build on their attacks off, so much so they've scored 16 goals in their last four games. So even if he doesn't get all the goals and assists that make him such a glorious name, he's an unbelievable player and so is his teammate sitting in number four, Alfonso Davis. Now we spoke about this last week because of the scintillating performance he put in against Chelsea, but it's not just that game. Bayern have been on form recently and a lot of it is down to how well the Canadian is doing. He's got a couple of assists in the last five games and is literally running that whole left hand side by himself an unbelievable performance and you technically probably could include you in the conversation for one of the best left backs in Europe at the moment so into the top three now and number three is Kylian Mbappe now I know we've just spoke about him scoring a hat-trick in the French Cup but that does not count the power rankings are for European competition and the league only, during which he's still on absolute fire. Over the weekend, he managed to get two goals and assist against Dijon, which basically just showed that he's still running the French League, even without Neymar, who was suspended. It looks like when Neymar's not there, Mbappe really is the key to everything good that PSG do. So finally, we come to the last two for this week, and you guys know how it goes already. I set out a case for both before finally revealing who takes the crown. So first up, on one hand, you've got Josip Ilicic. The Atalanta forward has been a part of their ridiculous free scoring form and at the weekend put in a near perfect performance. Over the weekend they put seven past Lecce and Josip Ilicic bagged a goal and got two assists and his classy play literally just allowed the rest of the team to find the back of the net. He's such a threat that so many players are drawn to him, everyone else has got loads of space including Duvan Zapata who managed to bag a hat trick. So with him as one contender the other is Manchester United new boy Bruno Fernandes. Three goals in the last three games and even though they didn't win and should have probably lost with that VAR decision again Everton, Bruno Fernandes has definitely been a bright spark. It's no wonder that so many clubs wanted him because they could all see his quality despite playing in the apparently poorer Portuguese league. What he's done is come over and been a real focal point for United in the short time he's been there and it looks like he really could be a key key player for them looking to the future. So without any further ado I can reveal that this week's winner is Josip Ilicic. Unbelievable form from him and should everything go to plan we'll definitely be seeing him taking to the field in the Champions League quarterfinals in a few weeks time. So that's all from me for today. Let me know your thoughts on the power rankings down below. Who would you have had in there? And what are your thoughts on the rest of today's daily news? Whilst you're at it, you can smash the like button. Click here. Yeah. Whilst you're at it, you can smash the like button on click here or here to check out all of the other videos we've got going on on OneFootball. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.